What's up, guys? Marcellus Williams, aka the Swole Professor, to educate you on health, fitness, and social well being. Today, guys, we're talking about myofibular and sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. I am the greatest. Before I get right into this, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys know that there are two articles down below. I'll link them in the description if you guys want to check that out. If you're someone who prefers to just read information instead of hearing me talk, go ahead and check those out. But if you're someone who just enjoys the sound of my voice, then listen up because I'm going to explain right now, guys, that while yes, there is a difference between sarcoplasmic and myofibular hypertrophy, there's a lot of myths and misinformation that have gone along with it. So in my video about the connection between strength and hypertrophy, I mentioned how irregardless of your rep range, so long as you are getting stronger, you're going to get bigger. To get stronger, you have to get bigger. To get bigger, you have to get stronger. The two go hand in hand. There is no separating that for natural lifters. And I talked about how regardless of rep range, that total workload is what matters. Meaning if you have someone who does three sets of 10 with 100 pounds, it's no different than someone who does 10 sets of three with 100 pounds. It's the same total workload. Now, are there pros and cons to different rep ranges? Sure, if you do three sets of 10, you can get you know, a certain amount of work done a lot faster. Whereas if you do 10 sets of three, you can actually go heavier than what you would with three sets of 10. So that's gonna help you in terms of like, you know, more explosive base power, which is great for, you know, powerlifters, athletes, et cetera. Now, here's where the problem comes in. I've mentioned sarcoplasmic and myofibular hypertrophy before, right guys? And basically what the difference is, is with sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, that is basically when our muscles are filling with sarcoplasmic fluid. It's, that's all that is. Like, it's basically hypertrophy without strength. Supposedly, that's what it's called. Whereas myofibular hypertrophy is when you are actually getting more muscle cells, like more muscle cells so that they can do more work, right? Because anytime we have a muscle cell contracts, it contracts fully, either it contracts or it doesn't. So in order to produce more force and get stronger, we have to either contract more muscle cells or have more muscle cells to contract. So myofibular hypertrophy is actual muscle cells being built up that comes with actual strength. That's how it's taught, taught to you guys anyway. That's how it's set. In actuality, guys, that's not the case, meaning myofibular hypertrophy and sarcoplasmic hypertrophy kind of go hand in hand. You can't train specifically for one over the other. There is no distinction like that. Now, do some people kind of develop more in one area than the other? Yes, but that is due to genetics. It is not due to rep range. It is not due to how somebody trains, meaning the whole thing about, oh, higher rep ranges are going to give you, you know, more sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, more of that soft, puffy looking muscle versus, oh, um, lower rep ranges are going to give you that harder, denser muscle. That's not the case, guys. A perfect example is this. If that's the case, why is it that bodybuilders who tend to train in the higher rep range still look really hard, really dense, really muscular, whereas powerlifters who often train in the lower rep range look what people call, you know, soft and putty, right? That, that doesn't make sense, right? It's kind of backwards. Well, that's simply because as I've explained before, guys, and I'll leave that video down below, as well as the video between about the connection between strength and hypertrophy, that the main difference between powerlifters and bodybuilders comes simply down to their body fat percentages. That's it. If you take an elite level powerlifter, have him do a cut, he's going to look just as good, if not better, than your natural bodybuilders that are walking around looking jacked. It's just a matter of body fat percentage. It has nothing to do with the rep range they train in. And you have to keep in mind, guys, that some people just are genetically more inclined to one thing than another. Meaning, you don't have all these bodybuilders who look the way they do because they trained in a certain rep range that caused them to look that way. It's simply due to their genetics. Now, let me be clear. In order to build your body up, yes, it's all about your training. If you don't train, you don't build your body up regardless. So yes, training has a huge impact on your muscle growth. You have to progressively overload. You have to get stronger for sure. But what you end up looking like is determined by your genetics. Not so much how you train, so much as determined by your genetics. And I went over that in my video all about what genetics do and don't affect. Meaning that the reason a lot of bodybuilders go towards bodybuilding is because they're genetically inclined towards that. They have those nice um, long muscle bellies. They have those good insertions. So when they train and they start seeing what their bodies look like, they're more inclined to go that way, regardless of what rep range they train in. That's why you have some bodybuilders who train in the higher rep range, you have some bodybuilders who train in the lower rep range. And it's the same thing with powerlifters. Powerlifters are people who tend to be genetically more inclined to be stronger, more explosive. They have a better connection as far as just naturally like with their nervous system with recruiting more muscle fibers, right? Because the more muscle fibers they recruit, the more force they can produce. Now, can we affect these things with training? Yes, once again, that's where the whole training in the lower rep range with heavier weight versus training in the higher rep range with less weight comes into. But at the end of the day, guys, that's why people do that. It's not a whole thing about like, oh, I trained this way, so 
I got to this point and that's why I went to the sport. It's more like, no, regardless of how they were training, they were more genetically inclined towards that. That's usually why they pick that. Now, do some people go against like the, the grain? Yeah, I mean, I myself, a lot of people would say that genetically speaking, I should probably go more into like physique or bodybuilding, but I chose powerlifting because it's what I enjoy and it's fun. And I was like I said, I work on those areas as far as that's what's gonna help me increase my strength as a whole. So. That's the big thing, guys. With sarcoplasmic and myofibular hypertrophy, there's not this huge like distinction where you can train solely for one or not train for the other. That's not how it goes. That's not to say that you don't get different results from training with different rep ranges. Obviously, with the lower rep ranges and heavier weight, that is gonna be more strength focused because you're gonna be, you're, think about it, you're gonna have to produce more force to lift more weight. So it's gonna help you more with power and explosiveness, whereas right? higher rep ranges are definitely gonna help more with muscular endurance, but regardless, as far as getting stronger on both progressive overloading, whether you're doing three sets of 12 or three sets of three, it's going to induce hypertrophy. You're gonna get stronger regardless. And that's another thing, guys. There's not this huge distinction between muscular endurance and muscular strength either, unless we're talking about extremes, like powerlifting versus, say, um, long distance running, like cross country. Obviously, those are two extremes, mm -hmm. very different results on the body. But in terms of things like we're working from any rep range from like three to 30 reps, as so long as that progressive overload, there's not as much difference as what people think. Like I said, some people are more inclined towards things than others. You can have two people on the exact same program, and even though both of them will gain muscle mass as they get stronger, the rates can be very different based upon their genetics. One of them may gain strength at a much faster rate compared to the muscle mass, whereas the other one may gain muscle mass a lot faster compared to the ratio of his strength. But regardless, the two go hand in hand. Like I said, that's what that whole video about the connection between strength and hypertrophy was about. In actuality, guys, if you really even want to think about it, there's no such thing as like true just sarcoplasmic hypertrophy in the sense of there is no type of hypertrophy where it's just based off you can just keep getting bigger and bigger by filling your muscles off with sarcoplasmic fluid without any strength increase. That's that's not how that works, guys, because once again, like I said in that video where I talked about, you know, different tips to help you discern between valid fitness information and invalid fitness information, any information that you're presented with that goes against those constants, those things that we have proven to be absolutely true under all circumstances as far as you know, natural lifters are concerned, progressive overload is one of them, which means there's no way for a natural lifter to get bigger and, and stronger without, you know, myofibular hypertrophy. In other words, if you're, you can't just get bigger without any type of strength increase. There will be strength increase as you get bigger. So pure sarcoplasmic hypertrophy would go against that. Why? Well, because it's hypertrophy without strength. It's just your muscles being filled with fluid. And like I said, that idea comes from the fact that, you know, you have people coming in here, they do a lot of reps and like they're getting that nice pump, right? But that pump is only temporary, guys. It doesn't last forever, right? Like obviously, like that's why guys get so upset, right? They work out, they're feeling all good and pumped. The next thing you know, the pump goes away. So it's just temporary in that sense, guys, in that nature. And like I said, there is sarcoplasmic hypertrophy in the sense of our muscles gradually learn to like be filled and hold more fluid. Yes, but that goes hand in hand with myofibular hypertrophy. You can't completely separate the two. And which one you're more inclined to is just kind of said like genetic. At the end of the day, your muscles get bigger because they get stronger. They get stronger because they get bigger. So that whole myth about like training in different rep ranges is just not the case, guys. Like I said, training different rep ranges can affect the body differently. And, and you know, based off what your sport is, you may want to train in certain reps. Like I said, obviously powerlifters are going to train with, you know, less reps and heavier weight more often than not. Whereas bodybuilders, due to like time, trying to get more volume, they train with higher rep ranges. But the mindset that I train this way, that's why I look this way. Like I said, at the end of the day, what you look like is determined by your genetics. At the end of the day, you building your body up and putting in the work to reach that genetic potential, yes, that's all your hard work. But what the end result looks like, you can't change that regardless of what rep range you use. I would look the way that I do now, whether I did three sets of 10, three sets of 12, or 10 sets of three. So long as I follow those rules of progressive overload in a caloric surplus, those things that are staples that we know we can't you know, get away without or that we can't disregard. That's just the way that works, guys. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it. At the end of the day, guys, there's really no difference between myofibular and sarcoplasmic hypertrophy in terms of how you train. Like, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, that's why it suggests to you guys to use different rep ranges. Different people do respond to different rep ranges, you know, differently. Like some people do respond better to like three sets of 10, four sets of 12, whereas some people respond better to maybe like five sets of five or 10 sets of three. But regardless, it's not that one is gonna induce more of a type of hypertrophy than the other. That's already genetically just proven. Meaning you may have somebody who responds really well to five sets of five and someone who responds really well to three sets of 12, right? But if the person who responds with a five sets of five simply puts on muscle mass at a faster rate, 
well, then that kind of throws the whole weight, but this guy's training higher rep range. Shouldn't you put him more sweat? No, it's genetically inclined, guys. That's how that works. That's why I've explained before in the past, if you have two people who are on the exact same program with, you know, one of them who trains in the lower rep range, his max may be a little bit higher, right? Whereas the other person may have a little bit more hypertrophy, but if all other things were equal with them genetically, it wouldn't matter. You pretty much would be getting the same results regardless. So I'm not saying this to discourage anyone from how you're training. If what it's doing is working for you, that's fine. If you like the, the higher volume, you know, more sets of reps, fine. If you're someone where you're like, nah, I like lifting heavy for less reps, that's fine. Do what works for you, but don't feel like you're missing out on anything in the sense of, I have to train this way for myofibular and this way for sarcoplasmic. There's essentially, as far as training, no difference. They are basically one and the same as one increases, the other increases. That's it. I hope I made that clear, guys. I hope that this wasn't too confusing. I know that this probably threw you off for a loop. You were probably all expecting me to tell you like, oh yeah, so this is how my female high pressure works, how sarcoplasmic high pressure works, do this, do this. No, that's not how it goes, guys. And for those of you who are wondering, well then why do so many bodybuilders, so many people push this whole like, hey, sarcoplasmic high pressure for this, my high pressure for this. Well, one is just a misunderstanding of how basic exercise physiology works. And another thing is guys, so they can sell you programs. Think about it. If I can tell you that the way I look is solely based off how I train, has nothing to do with my genetic base, that means that you're gonna be more inclined to buy my programs, right? You're like, whoa, if he looks that way based off his training and I train that way, then I'm gonna look like him. But as I explained in my video with genetics, guys, you can't change your genetics. You can't change your end result or what you're gonna look like. You can definitely change how you train and different variables like that. And is that gonna have slight differences on certain things? Sure. By the end of the day, you are who you are. You shouldn't compare yourself to anybody else anyway in the sense of trying to look like them because it's not going to happen. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment down below letting me know that you did. If you did not enjoy it, leave a comment down below letting me know what I can do to get better. Like the video. Share. Subscribe. Subscribe. Keep it simple, specific, scientific. I'll catch y'all later. I am the greatest. Come on, look, come on. Come on, look, come on.